Sure. So the first question is, you are very right that there are so many platforms, but every platform is doing something different. Sure. You, you know, one thing that I have noticed, and I've been involved in wealth management for a long time now, yeah. is that the fees keep on dropping and there is a race to zero. Yeah. So what are your thoughts? Like, is wealth management in retail segment yeah. going to zero? That's a very good question. It's a very loaded question also. Um, I think a lot of the wealth management platforms have historically only focused on access. You know, we build these five portfolios for you, five risk levels, choose one and so on and so forth, right? Um, I think they haven't really focused on advice. How can that be given out at scale? Now at SAIF, in size, we are, depending which benchmark, the first or second largest player, given, you know, 100,000 plus users in Singapore alone. Uh, we have tried to find a good blend between, you know, this kind of hybrid advice model. We have a little bit of a human touch, but then we also have a digital, you know, kind of filters which helps people choose what is right for them. So I feel uh, to your question, if you're purely an access platform and you really have no differentiator, then at the end of the day, you know, it will be a race down, yep. right? Uh, but if you have differentiators where you have innovative offerings, like something like, as I mentioned earlier about the Sci Fleet Plus, which is very unique to us, right? You have a moat because I will never need to cut the price on that because the, we are cheaper than the cheapest ETF in the market. Right. In fact, we've been debating, should we start increasing the price of that, <laughs> right? So, so I think that is the way how I would think of it. And, and that second part is important, at least if you see what has happened globally and you look at across industries, right? Now, if you look back in the day, uh, telcos or, you know, when new airlines were coming or whatever, they all had to cut price, cut price, cut price. Yep. But at some time, they tend to build the market. But once the market establishes, what happens? Price goes up, right? People say the same about ride hailing. There are five ride hailing apps. Have the prices of cabs gone down or gone up in the last 12 months? Uh, I don't think so. I have seen that. But yeah, it has gone up it's quite gone up, right? But if you look at even wealth and all, we are now seeing, and this hasn't panned out yet in Singapore, but we have seen firsthand in some of the other markets we operate at, where these companies have actually increased their prices. Yeah. And they're just saying, look, inflation hits everyone, right? It's not just these companies. So so in my view, uh, to your question, um, I, I think if a race to zero has to happen, it has to happen because you can't differentiate. And those businesses will struggle to exist. Yeah. Whereas there'll be businesses who will continue differentiating, will offer something else. I mentioned about advice over access and they'll be able to command a premium for that. And I feel they should and, you know, users will, right? Why should users not pay, right? And and they should if they find value in the product. So if the companies can keep on finding value, they can not only charge, they might be able to charge some more also. And don't be surprised you see that trend even pan out in, in this part of the world. No, absolutely. And I, I think there was a time when access to these markets or these products used to be a differentiator. Yes. We are way past that time. And Correct. Uh, there are other parts of the user journey that you can target. Like advice is, I, I personally feel that good advice is the least commoditized thing that is available in the wealth management yeah. market. I, yeah, I think yeah, you yeah. won me over at that. <laughs>